Member? Yes. Oh. First time here this summer? What? First time here in no. a while? No, we came here last weekend. You were here last weekend for the Model T too? Oh, really? So this is a 14 Model T. So you know all the history of the Model T's, right? I think so. You think so? So if I ask some questions, you'll be able to answer them, right? All right. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you a, an easy question. All right. What color was the first Model T? Um, yellow and black? No, uh, red. Red. Uh, red. Red? The first Model T in 1908 was red. I thought you guys said you've been on this before. <laughs> we never you heard been, that one. You haven't been paying attention then. No. I never heard that one. No? I always hear the same, you know, you can have any color you want. No, 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 no. You must We're not have had a car guy. Okay. Because <laughs> the, they initially, they, in fact, the first car was red. But initially they were red, green, gray, blue, and black. Oh. <laughs> In 1913 to 1926, then they went to all black. Okay, that's... They went to all black, and you know why? No. I thought you said you'd been on this before. <laughs> Come on! They went to all black. You gotta remember this now. The next time you do this, it's because it was the least expensive paint. Oh. From 1913 to 1926, they were all black. I know. And now there's these. Let's see if we can get these keys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get these keys. Alright, where's the gas tank? <laughs> Come on! You're sitting on the gas tank. Oh, right here? It's right here. Wow. The, We're getting a lot of good It's a 10 gallon tank. 10 gallons. 10 gallons. How many miles a gallon do you get? You, you, you must not have been paying attention. <laughs> I, I know that your driver had to tell you this stuff. 20 miles to a gallon. 20, no, 20 miles to a gallon. That's not too right. bad. Okay. Four cylinder engine, 20 horsepower, 20 miles to a gallon. All right. Got it? 10 gallon gas tank. 100, 176 and a half cubic inches. Right. What was the top speed on paved road? Forty to forty-five on paved road. On paved road. Twenty to twenty-five on dirt road. When was the first year that they uh, had, like the, the, they didn't have the crank starter? Nineteen. Not, well, technically, all the way through you crank the starter, but it was all offered as an option on a Model T in nineteen ninety. Electric, electric start, but it was an expensive option. Oh, okay. Is this one electric start? Or well, they, this is a 14, and they didn't come with electric start. All our cars have been converted to electric start, oh, okay. and they all have an alternator and a battery. Oh, okay. Just because we drive yeah, them, yeah, because yeah. we drive them all the time, and if they stall, you can start them right up. But other than that, it's all Model T engines, Model T drivetrain, brakes, everything Model T. Is there stuff like cover like in the winter maybe? You could you could buy side curtains that would snap. But the material of the day didn't lead itself well to the cold weather and it would crack. Most people would just bundle up. 
Yeah, I guess if you're used to riding a horse, it's been different. Horse and buggy, yeah. They did sell, people would take bricks and heat them on, in the oven and put them on the floor. Oh they sold these little foot warming ovens that you put the brick in. And you have to remember, we didn't have the, the clothes back then didn't keep you as warm oh, as the yeah, clothes yeah, today. Yeah, you're right. So when you're out here, when I'm out here driving and it's November and December, you're getting a full effect. Yeah. How long do they drive them out of the way into the... How long do we drive them? Well, next weekend will be the last weekend until November. We won't drive at all in October. Oh, okay. Because of, uh, we don't have enough people working and they have the Halloween program. So oh, November, you come November back. we're going to be back Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, oh, okay. and then holiday nights we're supposed to drive. We usually drive, but I don't know if we're going to drive or not. So we drive 20 nights, and then we're completely done until uh, next spring. So we've only been driving since July 8th. So, you notice the brass on the front of the cars there, the brass? Yeah. When was the last year they put brass on the car? And why did they do that? Can you answer either one of those questions? Probably, I'll probably say 1930? No. 1916. And the reason why was because of World War I. They needed the brass to make shell cases. So from 1917 all the way to 1926, all the Model T's will be, everything will be painted. Then in 1926 and 27, it looks like chrome, but it's nickel plated. So if I ever get you guys again, you're going to have to answer some of these questions. The other thing you have to remember is a horse and buggy, it would take all day to travel 15 to 20 miles. Oh, and you yeah. could do that in an hour or less than one of these. That's what really opened up the country. Well, it turned out to be a nice afternoon. Yeah.
Tactical, make sure they're held or easily within your reach. For your own safety, remain seated while the train's in motion. Please keep your head, arms, legs inside the cars at all times. <laughs> We'll say goodbye to Mike and Linda here at Smith Creek. See now we get our journey to the front at Firestone Station. We'll be passing by our Smith Creek train depot. Built in 1858 by Grand Trunk Railroad. First international railroad to operate in the United States. Even though the station was only located 8 miles from Fort Huron, it was in the countryside. So the station master and family were allowed to live at the people and conduct railroad operations. We're now coming up to our Detroit Toledo Milwaukee Roundhouse. This was built in Marshall, Michigan in 1884. Purpose was for the service and maintenance of steam locomotives. We carry on that tradition today as a working roundhouse with the three coal-fired locomotives and diesel electric that we operate here during the season. You're welcome to walk by the front, look through the big doors and see what is going on inside. The main building itself, though, is still closed to the general public. We'll now be going by the backside of Liberty Craftworks and our sawmill. We'll soon be entering into a working farms district. This is the Firestone Farm that is home to Harvey Firestone, founder of the Firestone Rubber and Tire Company. You're welcome to stroll around the farmhouse. Go into the barn, you can see all the livestock that were raised here on the farm. Make sure that you have all of your belongings as well as your cell phones. And if you to be seated until the point of the heat stop. Once the whistle sounds, the moving pipes are set and it will be safe to exit on the right hand side. Please wait for the whistle. Also remember if you're boarded with any children, they have to go with you. <laughs> Welcome to the Greenfield Village Railroad. For the safety of our younger riders, we ask the adults with them, please place yourselves on the outside of the row. If that is not practical, make sure they're held or easily within your reach. For your own safety, remain seated while the train's in motion. Please keep your head, arms, legs inside the cars at all times. We'll say goodbye to Pat here at Firestone. We now begin our journey to Susquehanna Station.
The Lake Farmhouse that we're approaching was the birthplace of Henry Ford. He was born here in July of 1863. Farm was located just outside of Detroit, comprised of 70 acres, and the family raised sheep. You're welcome to stop by the farmhouse and go inside, see what life was like for Henry growing up here as a young boy. Now, if you look to your left, just past the farmhouse, you can look down on our main street. Here you'll find the Wright Cycle Shop, Wright Home, Ford Motor Company, Model T Rides, Mary Collins Millberry, and our 1913 Herschel Spillman Carousel. We'll now be passing by our Miller Schoolhouse. During normal times, elementary school groups are allowed to come here and conduct class for the day. We're now passing by Menlo Park. This was Thomas Edison's laboratory in New Jersey. He's credited with over 1,000 patents for this facility. You're welcome to stop by, stroll the grounds, and even go inside. Now, if you look to your left to cross the street, the yellow building is the Sarah Jordan Boarding House. This is where all the single young men that worked for Edison would stay and live, and in 1879 was one of the first few buildings that Edison had electrified. Next to that would be his Fort Myla Florida Laboratory. Whenever we get too cold in New Jersey, he would go down to Florida to conduct his experiments. We're now approaching our Equity Bridge. This is our gateway into our Purchase and Partners District. From Susquehanna Station, you can go up the hill to Noah Webster's home. He is credited with giving us our first American Dictionary that took over 25 years to complete. Or you can stroll down Maple Lane and visit all of the homes that we have here in the village. You can even go into our Susquehanna Plantation comes from Tidewater, Maryland, and in 1832, the principal crops were corn and tobacco. Now, as we come into Susquehanna Station, we can all wave and say hi to Ginger, Station Master here, and I ask everybody to please remain in your seats until we come to a complete stop. Once the whistle sounds, that will mean the brakes are set, and it will be safe to exit on the left-hand side. Please, wait for the whistle. It is now held or easily within your reach. For your own safety, remain seated while the train's in motion. Please keep your head, arms, legs, and side the car at all times. We'll say goodbye to Ginger here at Susquehanna. We now begin our journey to the north side at Smith Creek. We're now approaching our Cape Cod windmill, built in 1649. It's the last known original structure of its kind left in the United States. If you ever want to try colonial living, 
our Daggett Farmhouse predates the American Revolutionary War. It was built in 1757. You can stop by and they'll be happy. They'll tell you what life was like back at that time. And as we slowly go around the turn, 
you'll find three railroad cars that have been combined into two large classrooms. This is where our seniors finish out their final year.
to support this bill. I'll put that to stand out on July 30th, 1863. Ha <laughs> ha